OK, very good morning, my dear students. So today we can discuss the importance of MRA transmission techniques or binary transmission techniques. So in the earlier classes, we have uh, studied uh, so many uh, varieties of uh, distal modulation techniques. So namely, we studied amplitude shift keying, uh, frequency shift keying, phase shift keying, and in phase shift keying, we have seen the non-coherent version. So the non-coherent version of phase shift keying is differential PSK. And to overcome some drawbacks of DPSK, we have discussed uh, DEPSK also, differentially encoded PSK. Okay, so like that, and also we have studied uh, the one of the MRA transmission technique of PSK, namely QPSK, quadrature phase shift key. So I think somehow you can have an idea of why we are going to opt the MRA transmission techniques. So in this module, you can study the importance of MRA transmission techniques and you can see the generalized block diagram of all kinds of MRA transmission techniques. So for using that, you can use either ASK, PSK or FSK. So you know we have a lot of advantages for PSK. So that's why uh, instead of ASK and FSK, PSK is preferred. So you can prefer uh, PSK in terms of its bandwidth or in terms of its low probability of error or in terms of its high noise immunity or in terms of high SMR. So what not, it has a lot of advantages and you can reduce its bandwidth and you can increase its transmission rate by using MRA transmission techniques. See, this is the learning outcome of this uh, like module. Uh, thereby you can discuss, uh, you can get an idea of uh, why uh, researchers have uh, developed MRA transmission techniques. Instead, we are having binary transmission techniques. So you can see MRA transmission technique here. Uh, and if you observe here, please observe the first point out of ASK, FSK and PSK. PSK has a lot of advantages that include high noise immunity, less and less probability of error because its Euclidean distance is high. OK, so to, in order to reduce the bandwidth utilization of PSK, and also to increase the transmission rate. OK, so here we are reducing the bandwidth of PSK and we are increasing the transmission rate. Why we are how we are increasing the transmission rate? Because in MRA transmission techniques, you are grouping n number of bits. OK, you are grouping n number of bits for transmission. So once you group like that, the information rate or the transmission rate will increase of the particular system will increase. So uh, in order to reduce the bandwidth utilization or uh, to increase the transmission rate, these MRA transmission techniques have introduced that point I mentioned here. Now in BPSK, uh, let us move from uh, from binary channel, binary transmission techniques. Okay, so already we discussed uh, out of ASK, FSK, PSK has a lot of advantages. So in PSK, the number of bits per uh, symbol that is in case of binary transmission technique n is one that is only one bit is transmitted per symbol <coughs> in that case we have uh, how many number of phase changes two phase changes because number of phase changes is represented by m uh, that is nothing but number of symbols okay so it is two power one so mathematically what is the relation between the number of sim, uh, bits per symbol and the uh, number of uh, symbols transmitted per second. So n is equal to log m base 2, where n is number of bits transmitted per symbol and m is the number of symbols, number of symbols present in the whole uh, sequence. Now, similarly, you go to QPSK. So it is also called as 4 array PSK. So we have advantage of, uh, it's an advantage, it's like you can say that uh, it is the advanced version of BPSK, whereby you are grouping two bits per symbol. So that's why we sometimes QPSK, you can call it as like a debit. So die bits, two bits are transmitted, debit. So for uh, a signal transmission. But in QPSK, the number of bits per symbol are two. So number of phase changes will be capital M, so four. So that's why in QPSK, we represented four symbols. So similarly, PSK having eight phase changes is called eight array PSK. 
uh, in 8 array PSK, 3 bits are grouped. That is, you can uh, call it as tri-bit, tri tri-bit. Okay, so 3 bits are grouped. So, uh, uh, like grouping like that, you will get 8 phase changes. So, how many uh, like uh, symbols you have in uh, 8 array PSK? 8 symbols. Okay, so similarly, you extend, uh, researchers have extended that to MRA PSK where we have m number of symbols, m number of symbols and n number of bits are grouped per second. Okay, so that's why we can say there are m number of output phase changes. So it leads to m number of symbols. Okay, this is the general introduction for uh, MRA PSK. <coughs> yes. Please all of the students go through the generalized block diagram of MRA PSK. So, uh, here you can observe you have phase modulator. For example, instead of phase, if you keep amplitude modulator, you can call it as MRA ASK. If you replace it with frequency modulator, you can say it as MRA FSK transmitter. Okay, but because MRA PSK has a lot of advantages, we are discussing MRA PSK transmitter section. Okay, so now please observe what is input B of T? B of T is the input uh, bipolar uh, sequence. So initially you have uh, unipolar that is converted into bipolar B of T because for any kind of PSK uh, like system, you need the input as bipolar. So obviously you at the destination point that is uh, before transmission, you should convert it into uh, bipolar. Then only you can get phase change. So now that B of T is convert, it's uh, sent to serial to parallel converter. So now what you are doing here, you are splitting the entire B of T sequence into n number of bits. So entire sequence is first split into, so like overall B of T sequence, you are splitting into n number of uh, bits per symbol so that you have m number of symbols. How many number of bits are there here? n number of bits are there for each and every symbol. So uh, the corresponding series sequence is converted into n number of uh, bits, n number of bits per symbol. So similarly, we have uh, m number of symbols in the corresponding sequence of B of T. So if you have it in doubt, you can see here. So MRA PSK is a modulation where data bits select one of m shifted versions of the carrier to transmit the data. So each symbol will have different phase. So in PSK, each symbol will have different phase. Okay, so because in QPSK you have seen, S1 v is uh, possess a phase shift of pi by 4, S2, 3 pi by 4, S3, 5 pi by 4, S4, 7 pi by 4, like that, as you move uh, move towards MRA PSK, we have M symbols in such a way that each uh, MSK will have, sorry, each uh, symbol will have different phase shift. Each symbol will have different phase shift. Okay, so like that, each symbol will of uh, MRA PSK will have different phase shift, and each symbol consists of n number of bits, ranging from zero to n minus one. Okay, so first our B of T is applied to serial serial to parallel converter. So what it will do? It will split the entire sequence B of T into m number of symbols, so that each symbol consists of n number of bits. Each symbol consists of n number of bits. Okay, so because you are grouping n number of bits per symbol, it is called as two power n array PSK or MRA PSK. So all these are applied to digital to analog converter. So now the because you, you are converting the digital like a group of bits into analog. OK, and that is modulated using the corresponding type of modulator and that signal will be transmitted. Here you are converting the digital signal into analog and the data corresponding data will be modulated. So if it is phase, uh, like if we are using phase shift keying, it is called as, you will use phase modulator. Okay, 
So similarly, if you are using FSK frequency modulators, so what are the various frequency modulators you studied in uh, our uh, analog communication? So like voltage controlled oscillator, like you can use different kind of Armstrong method you can use. So if it is amplitude modulator, you can use switching modulator or collector modulation method if it is high level high level. So like that accordingly you can use the type of the modulator. <coughs> because it is MRA PSK you should use phase modulator here. OK, and that is uh, finally you will get MRA PSK signal. So what how can you get MRA PSK signal? MRA PSK signal consists of uh, like M number of symbols and each symbol consists of n number of bits. OK, now please observe that the M possible waveforms, M possible waveforms all. So all have equal amplitude and phase, but different sorry equal amplitude and frequency, but different phases. Already I told you in PSK you have on the different phase, but same amplitude and same frequency. OK. Now the signal constellations consists of M equally spaced points on a circle. So that's why in MRA PSK you will have M number of like equally spaced points and nothing but M number of symbols are there and each symbol will have different phase. OK, so like that where M is equal to 2 power N. N ranges from 1 to uh, like 0 to N minus 1. OK, so this is a generalized block diagram of any kind of MRA transmission technique. OK, so in the exams you got this question, please uh, draw this recording block diagram and you can uh, explain the theoretical part why we are opting MRA in order to reduce the bandwidth and you can group uh, uh, n number of bits. Once you group n number of bits, you can uh, like uh, you can increase the information rate or transmission rate. Now please observe the generalized expression for MRA PSK. If it is uh, general PSK, I told you root 2 PS into cos omega CT plus phi. Phi is 0 uh, for data bit 1. Phi is uh, 180 for data bit 0, I told you on that day. So the day I explained the binary PSK. But what is the general expression for any kind of MRA PSK? So you can apply this to any kind of array like 2 array, 4 array, like 8 array, 16 array, 32 array, 64 array, 128 array like that, 2 powers. Okay, like that you will have so many uh, like uh, multiple uh, MRA transmission techniques. So what is the general expression for MRA PSK? Root 2 PS into, what is root 2 PS? amplitude of carrier which is AC into cos omega CT plus phi m. What is phi m? Phi m is a phase change. OK, that phase val phase uh, variations depend on the type of the uh, array PSK. OK, so what is the phase change? Phi m is 2m plus 1 into pi by m. Phi m is equal to 2m plus 1 into pi by m. What is small m? Small m ranges from 0 to m minus 1. OK, and you can represent uh, m as number of symbols, which is 2 power n. Or else you can write it as n here. n is equal to uh, capital N minus 1. So 0 to capital N minus 1. OK, so please observe. What is the phase difference between two successive symbols? 2 pi by m, 2 pi by m. For example, please observe if m is equal to 4. When m will be 4? When you have two symbols, when you have two like two bits grouped per symbol, then you have m value as 4. OK, where a small m ranges from 0 to 3 because what is the capital M value? 4. In QPSK, n is 2, small n is 2. Here small n value is 2. OK, where n is number of bits group per symbol. So what will be our capital M? Capital M will be 2 power 2, that is 4. So where 
for four array QPSK, M ranges from zero to three. Please substitute the value of Z M zero for in order to get the phase change for first symbol. And uh, similarly, tell me what is the phase change for second symbol. You can get uh, by replacing M with one. Similarly, replace M two. You can get like this. M three. You can get. 3 into 2 plus 1 divided by into pi by m. It will be 7 pi by 4. Now, any one of the student, please tell me uh, the like uh, what are the phase changes for four number of symbols present in QPSK. Already we studied QPSK in the last class. So in QPSK, you can tell me uh, what are the different phase changes. Ma'am, 5 by 4, 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4. Yes, very good. So did you get the same values here by using this expression, general expression? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So what is the general expression for any kind of MRA PSK? Thank you. Uh, root 2 PS into cos omega CT plus phi m, where phi m is 2m plus 1 into pi by m. Now, please check it for BPSK. For BPSK, what is the value of capital M? Any one of you, please tell me. Uh, tell me phase changes for binary PSK by using this expression. Any one of the student kindly respond in binary phase shift keying. What is the value of capital M? How many symbols you will have? Kindly any one of you respond. So many students are there here. No, 52 students are there. Any one of you please respond. And please check the same value for binary PSK. C2, C2. Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell me in BPSK, uh, what is how many symbols you will have? Two, ma'am. Two symbols. So, uh, what is the phase uh, change of each and every symbol? Zero and pi, ma'am. Zero and pi. Very good. Thank you. Please respond whenever a teacher asks question, so that we'll feel happy. Huh? If no one uh, here, we have 52 students. If no one uh, responds to my question, what I should feel, how I should feel, so whether you are uh, present or not. Okay, thank you, C2. Ma, please listen. Okay, as he said, if you replace capital M as 2 for binary PSK, you will get two phase changes. Uh, one is for uh, first one, if you take uh, M, small m as 0 and capital M as, uh, if you replace it as 2, then you will get total value as. 0 and another one is pi by pi that's all and similarly if you check it for uh, uh, QPSK you will get the phase changes as pi by 4, 3 pi by 4, 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4. Okay so this is a general expression uh, so root 2 ps into cos omega ct plus phi m. Okay. Now, please, all of you observe uh, the signal constellation in 8 array PSK. I told you 8 array PSK uses the phase shift of pi by 4. Because what is the expression for phase shift? Phase shift is nothing but the uh, phase difference between two successive symbols. So what is the general expression 2 pi by m? 
because the general expression for phase shift in MRA PSK is 2 pi by m. So 2 pi by m, m is 8 here. So 2 pi by m will be pi by 4. Okay, I, I told you in QPSK yesterday's class that the, to, the phase shift between any two successive symbols is equal to 2 pi by m, where capital M is 8. In 8 array, you will have 2 pi by 8. So you will get pi by 4 as phase shift between any two successive symbols. If you observe the symbols here, how many symbols are there in uh, 8 array PSK? 8 symbols. Uh, like uh, So you will have like corresponding carriers. Okay, so each have different phase shift. So if you observe the phase shift between two successive symbols, the phase shift is pi by 4. So what is the phase shift? between two successive symbols in a four array PSK. In QPSK, we got it as pi by two. The phase shift between any two successive symbols in MRA PSK is two pi by M. In QPSK, it is pi by four, like pi by two. In eight array PSK, it is pi by four. In the two array PSK, it is pi, like that. Okay, so, you can, so now this is the general one. So you can see, the signal constellation and Euclidean distance in MRA PSK. So what is the phase shift between any two successive symbols in MRA PSK 2 pi by m? So if you observe the uh, constellation diagram here, how many symbols are there? S1, S2 up to so on, S, M minus 1. So total of M number of symbols are there. M number of symbols are there. If you observe the phase shift between two successive symbols, so two successive symbols, S1 and SM minus 1, for example, if you observe, what is the phase shift? Total is pi by m plus pi by m. That will be 2 pi by m. So that's why we mentioned phase shift between any two successive symbols in MRA PSK is 2 pi by m. Now let us calculate the Euclidean distance in MRA PSK. So here we can derive the general expression for uh, MRA PSK Euclidean distance. Now all of you please observe the constellation diagram carefully and you can observe one triangle here that is O, A, B and we are going to calculate the Euclidean distance between S1 and S M minus 1. S1 and S M minus 1. So between these two symbols we are going to calculate the Euclidean distance. So now please construct the triangle here. That is O, A is nothing but the due to the symbol SM minus 1. And O, A, B. Please observe the triangle O, A, B. And here you will have S1. So we are going to calculate the distance between S1 and SM minus 1. That is nothing but the Euclidean distance. So Euclidean distance is the uh, distance between any two successive symbols. So similarly, you can calculate the distance between S1, S2, S2, S3, S3, S4. Here we are calculating between S1 and S minus 1. That is the last one. Okay. So if you observe this triangle carefully, what is the phase shift between uh, two successive symbols? We know it is 2 pi by m. So because this is perpendicular line, you can consider this phase difference as pi by m. So what is the angle between uh, B, O, A? That is pi by m. So, and uh, this is a right angle triangle. So you will get 90 degrees if you draw a perpendicular line. So you will get 90 degrees. Uh, the angle between, like uh, the angle of B is, for the, ang for the triangle OBA is 90 degrees here. Now let us calculate sine pi by m. <coughs> so make use of this triangle, make use of this triangle. So please make use of this triangle and let us assume the distance between S1 and SM minus 1 as D12. That is our Euclidean distance. Okay. Uh, so please calculate, <coughs> please evaluate sine pi by m. So sine pi by m will be AB by, so this distance AB by OA. Okay. So sine pi by m will be AB divided by OA. So sine pi by m you can get it as AB is nothing but half of the distance of D12 or the Euclidean distance. 
So D12 divided by 2 by root PSTS. So why root PSTS? Because we know that the magnitude of uh, each and every symbol present in every PSK is root ES. That is root PSTS. Because we took the same in uh, uh, like a binary phase shift key as well as quadrature phase shift key. So finally you got D12 as 2 root PSTS into sine pi by m. Okay, so what is the Euclidean distance of uh, MRA PSK? For MRA PSK, Euclidean distance, uh, this is the generalized expression 2 root PSTS into sine pi by m. Okay, so using this triangle, you can calculate D12 in terms of sine pi by m as 2 root PSTS into sine pi by m where PS into TS is simple energy, it's not the bit energy. So because if you can replace TS as NTB, then you will get in terms of bit energy. Because in MRA PSK, TS is equal to N into TB because N number of bits are grouped, okay, per symbol. Now what is the general expression for uh, uh, Euclidean distance? You can check it for BPSK and QPSK, okay. You can check the value of Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK. I think uh, you have already calculated the Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK in the last classes we studied. So any one of the student please tell me what is the Euclidean distance of BPSK? Any one of you kindly tell me. Please tell me what is the Euclidean distance for BPSK? How much you got? 2 root PS into TS plus. Yes, very good. That is 2 root PS into TS. Uh, because here sine pi by 2 is 1. You can check the same by using this expression. So it is 2 root PS TS into sine pi by 2. Okay, sine pi by 2 is 1. So you will get 2 root PS TS. But TS is equal to TB BPSK because TS is 1 into TB. So it will be TB only. So 2 root PS into TB is our Euclidean distance of BPSK. So here you can define PS into TB as bit energy EB. Okay. Similarly, you can check the same for QPSK. Please check the same for QPSK. What is the value of M for QPSK? M, four number of symbols are there because you are grouping two number of symbols, two number of bits per symbol. So N is 2. So TS will be N into TB. So 2 into TB. So D12 is 2 root PS into 2 TB into sine pi by 4. Because sine pi by M is the general expression. Pi by 4. So 2 root 2 into PS into TB into 1 by root 2. So you will get here root 2, root 2 gets cancelled. So finally you got it as 2 root PS into TB. So that's why we concluded at the last class that the Euclidean distance of uh, our BPSK system and a QPSK system both are same and it is equal to 2 root PS into TP. So that's why in terms of probability of error, we can say that both the systems provide you similar uh, probability of error. So and it is less because the Euclidean distance is more twice that of uh, BASK. Okay, so like that you can see the general expression. Similarly, you can calculate the same for 8 array PSK also and 16 array and 32 array also you can calculate. So you can use the expression. What is the general expression? 2 root PSTS into sine pi by m. Okay, let us move to the next slide. So similarly bandwidth. So what, how can you calculate the bandwidth for m array PSK? So for MRA PSK also you, the response will be like this. But what is the bandwidth here? Upper cutoff minus lower cutoff you will get it as 2 FS. Okay 2 FS is the uh, because here also you will use in, for any kind of PSK you will use multiplier. Okay so once you use multiplier obviously our signal gets uh, uh, like our uh, carrier component gets shifted to plus or minus FS. Okay, so that's why you will get the total bandwidth of MRA PSK as 2 FS. 
What is FS actually? FS is the symbol or you can say uh, sampling rate or symbol frequency. Now what is the relation between uh, we know for symbol uh, duration and uh, bit duration? I think you know the relation because in every PSK two n bits are grouped. So that's why n into TB is the total uh, symbol duration because n number of bits are there per symbol. So n into individual bit duration gives you our symbol duration. So how can you get FS then? FS is the reciprocal of, so it is the bit rate, a symbol rate. See, always remember one point uh, in your gate examination, sometimes you will get a baud rate, B-A-U-D, baud rate at term. So that baud rate is nothing but the symbol rate, FS. Baud rate is nothing but the symbol rate or uh, sampling frequency actually if the signal is sampled in uh, analog uh, uh, communication you study like that but here you are dealing with uh, bits so digital uh, communication so that's why it is defined as either symbol rate or baud rate b a u d baud rate okay so 2 into f s so 2 by t s you can write it as so 2 by TS is n into TB. Okay, so TB is nothing but the bit duration, or you can also say it as uh, the reciprocal for that is bit rate. So here FB is bit rate and FS is symbol rate. This symbol rate is also called as baud rate. B A U D baud rate. Okay. <coughs> so what is the total bandwidth of MRA PSK? For any uh, MRA PSK technique, what is the general expression for bandwidth? 2 FB by N. Because you can observe the, from the spectrum, uh, the bandwidth is 2 FS because upper cutoff minus lower cutoff. Okay, so finally you got it as 2 FB by N. So please check it for BPSK. For BPSK, what is the value of? Uh, please check the value, uh, check the expression for BPSK and QPSK. What is the bandwidth for BPSK? How much you got? Please one of you respond. What is the bandwidth of BPSK? What is the bandwidth of BPSK signal? We calculated it. What is the bandwidth of BPSK? Very good. So how can you get 2 FB here? You can take N value as 1 bit per symbol. If you take N as 1, you will get it as 2 FB. For QPSK, for QPSK, how much bandwidth you got? If you take 2 here, 2 FB by 2. So the bandwidth is FB. So like that, uh, based on the type of the MRA PSK technique, you can uh, accordingly substitute the value of N and directly you can get for 8 array PSK. Can you tell me what is the bandwidth for 8 array PSK? Any one of you. Tell me the bandwidth for 8 array PSK. We have not calculated that, but you can do this by using this expression. Tell me the bandwidth for 8 array PSK. Any one of you, please tell me what is the bandwidth for 8 array PSK? Two FB by three. Yes, two FB by three. So what you can conclude here, as you increase the like, as you group the number of bits. So once you group the number of more number of bits, you can reduce the bandwidth. So 2 FB by 3, so it is less compared to FB and it is less compared to like uh, uh, 2 FB by 2 FB that is for BPSK. Similarly, as you move on fr from uh, like uh, grouping more number of bits, you can reduce the bandwidth. You can reduce the bandwidth. So that is the conclusion uh, using MRA transmission techniques. So as you group more number of bits, we can conclude that uh, the, you can reduce the 
we can reduce the bandwidth and at the same time you can increase the information rate or transmission rate. Okay, so that is the conclusion of MRA PSK. And now please observe that receiver section. If you observe the receiver section, you have seen, I think you can recollect uh, the thing that we have, you have studied the same type of coherent receiver section for BPSK and QPSK. This is the coherent version of MRA PSK receiver section. What we are doing here actually, here you are uh, taking the modulated signal. Which modulated signal? PSK modulated signal. So MRA PSK signal is applied here. Please check this once. Here MRA PSK signal is received at the, is collected at the receiver section. So let us assume that as S of T. Please assume that as S of T. Okay. Now, uh, what is our intention? Our intention is to generate the synchronous carrier. So in order to generate the synchronous carrier in BPSK, we used a square law device and bandpass filter of 2FC and a frequency divider by 2 to generate the synchronous carrier. So in QPSK, we used uh, raise the power by 4 and 4 F naught and divided by 4. So similarly in MRA PSK, you can use the three sections, but the raise the input power by factor of M and bandpass filter cutoff is M into FC. Here we mentioned generalized F naught. F naught is an oscillator frequency or you can, that is nothing but the carrier component. So frequency divider by M. Okay. So finally, by using these three sections, you can generate synchronous carrier. Okay, so uh, that is cos 2 pi FCT or 2 pi F naught T if generalized MRA. And how can you get sine 2 pi FCT? By using Hilbert transform. So by using cos, uh, uh, by using these three sections, you can generate synchronous carrier cos 2 pi F naught T. And by using applying Hilbert transform, you can generate quadrature carrier. So here in phase carrier is cos 2 pi FCT and quadrature carrier is sine 2 pi FCT. Now as usual to QPSK, in phase is applied to correlator 1 and uh, quadrature carrier is applied to quadrature carrier is applied to correlator 2. Okay, in phase carrier is applied to correlator 1 and quadrature phase carrier is applied to correlator 2. Now, what is the multiplier 1 output in correlator 1? It is S of t into cos 2 pi f naught t. And what is the multiplier output of uh, correlator 2? MRA PSK signal multiplied by quadrature carrier. So it is S of t into sine 2 pi f naught t. And I told you that uh, uh, the low pass filters are used. So what is the correlator? It is a combination of multiplier and a low pass filter. It is nothing but the synchronous detector. Okay, similarly correlated to is also a synchronous detector, but due to quadrature carrier. Okay, two low pass filters are used and upper low pass filter is generally used for like uh, even intervals. And lower uh, bandpass filter, sorry, lower low pass filter or you can say the low pass filter in correlated to, you can uh, integrate it to attain TS into P dot. So odd sequence you can get from correlator 2 and even sequence you can obtain from correlator 1. So now both the components are applied to analog to digital converter. So the digital data is here you will obtain the digital data uh, like in the form of n number of bits per symbol. Now you need to group all those to form a sequence. So that parallel data should be converted into a sequence. Okay, that's why parallel to serial converter is used at the receiver. So these parallel to serial converter and uh, at the transmitter we used serial to parallel converter. These are used for timing synchronizations. Okay, like you in QPSK you used uh, demultiplexer at transmitter and multiplexer at the receiver. So here you are in generalized version, you are using series to parallel converter and parallel to series converter. Series to parallel at uh, transmitter and uh, parallel to series converter at the receiver section to provide the timing synchronization. 
now the uh, finally you get b of t sequence okay this is all about the mri receiver section now what are the advantages of mri technique mri psk so it is in terms of bandwidth and in terms of power so you can say it is an efficient technique over binary transmission techniques because here you are reducing the bandwidth it is 2 fb by n so as you group more number of bits you can reduce the bandwidth and you can uh, increase the transmission rate okay and it is power efficient because psk itself is a power efficient technique and the mri psk is highly noise immune and here you can say that the probability of error using uh, mri transmission techniques is less mri psk is less because uh, euclidean distance is more in the case of psk okay so here you can write one more point that information rate information rate information or transmission rate is high okay this is also one more advantage So like that we have so many advantages for mri and psk we have a lot of advantages okay so like similar to psk we have varieties of applications for mri psk also mri psk is preferred over mri fsk and mri ask so mri schemes are used in quasi optical wireless array applications similarly compressed image communication in mobile fading so you can uh, uh, like you can reduce the fading problem by using this psk techniques okay so in order to track the satellite information and uh, the data so relay data you can uh, attain by using satellite systems okay similarly similar to the bpsk and qpsk it is also used in all the uh, like uh, cellular standards where you can use in varieties of uh, Uh, like uh, applications like 3G, 4G, fifth generation also we are using the CDMA. So all these uh, CDMA, LTE, everything it will use uh, MRA PSK techniques and even wireless LAN and uh, the IEEE standards uh, 802.16. Okay, so satellite and cable TV applications, what not, and all the rest of uh, traditional applications of BPSK. So here we have varieties of uh, MRA PSK applications. okay so with this we can uh, complete mri mri transmission techniques we can uh, interpret the inter performance of mri transmission techniques over binary transmission techniques okay now so with this uh, we can complete our eighth module okay and the one more thing i want to show you and uh, so by the next class so tomorrow it's sunday uh, so all of the students please compare the binary ask binary fsk and binary uh, psk in all aspects okay so actually in your syllabus it is given like similarity of bfsk and bpsk but instead of fsk and psk please compare uh, bask also because we have varieties of factors you studied euclidean distance probability of error bandwidth and uh, similarly the like the general expressions so like that you can compare in varieties of aspects uh, please go through that and uh, write in one paper right please write uh, the comparison on one paper and uh, take like a photocopy of that and submit to me okay submit me in the chat box that is enough in the general chat box you can submit so now we completed the second chapter please any one of the student can you be able to compare uh, ask fsk and psk in your uh, uh, like in the way you want to explain so you can compare all these ask fsk and psk in various uh, factors any one of you can you compare so you can see the slide i have kept it for you you can see that and explain me i will feel happy so with this uh, we can complete our second chapter
the next class onwards we can start the third and uh, we meanwhile i have to show you some uh, gate problems regarding this uh, second chapter so uh, we can say that this second chapter is a heart of uh, digital communication techniques because here only you will study ask fsk and psk all these we are studying in this uh, second chapter only okay and how to generate the corresponding techniques how to generate the ask modulated fsk modulated psk this you can say that this is the heart of digital communication okay because in the third chapter you will calculate the probability of error for all these techniques that's all but uh, the, here only you can uh, gain lot of knowledge on digital communication and even in a gate examination you will get uh, questions for, especially from this chapter okay so that's why i will mention you and meanwhile any one of the student please go through this table i have shown it for you uh, this part uh, this uh, uh, you can go through that and can you explain me at least one difference from your side any one of the student you can go through the slide and tell me at least one difference D0 is there, D0. Its number is there, D0. C7, C7. H7, H7. H7. Ma'am. Can you compare ASK, FSK and PSK in terms of its uh, bandwidth? See, I have given the performance pressure. So please take bandwidth and please compare uh, binary ASK, FSK and PSK in terms of its bandwidth. What is the bandwidth of ASK signal? One minute now. Okay. Okay. If you need time, uh, you can take Sunday and uh, you can go through uh, the whole chapter and you can, can you be able to explain on Monday? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I will provide you the material also. Today I will post this uh, MRA and uh, the comparison table. Please go through that and read the whole chapter because uh, this is very, very important even for your uh, uh, like uh, examinations, not only the like regular exams. Okay, even for gate or if you want to any go to any higher studies, you will uh, get questions only from this chapter, especially. Okay, so please go through the go through and uh, try to compare ASK, FSK and PSK in all aspects. See, you can see bandwidth of ASK is 2 FB and our uh, FSK has bandwidth of F 4 FB and PSK has a bandwidth of 2 FB. Okay, like that you can take the uh, corresponding uh, factor and compare. Okay. And I request uh, at least uh, 15 uh, comparisons. Okay, uh, try to compare. <laughs> ASK, FSK, PSK. Hachunata Simhasa Namupai. Asimhasa Okay. Okay, we can stop the session here.